Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science, your weekly source for the latest science news. In the headlines this week, scientists have discovered how bowhead whales are able to live for more than 200 years. Chimpanzees have been found to be capable of rationally revising their beliefs like a human. A new species of mosasaur has been discovered and much more. Before we get into this episode, yes, I know the biggest paleo news of the week is the new study showing that the dwarf tyrannosaur Nanotyrannus really did exist, and they weren't just juvenile T-Rex. This is such incredibly exciting news that I couldn't fit everything I wanted to say about it into a regular episode. And so we have a 7 Days of Science special feature in the works all about the Nanotyrannus news, breaking down all the details of what this new research has found and the implications for our understanding of tyrannosaurs. It should be out tomorrow, so make sure you turn on that notification bell so you don't miss it. Our top story this week is the incredible news that researchers have figured out how bowhead whales can live for more than 200 years. And the particularly exciting thing is that it might allow humans to live much longer as well. It's been known for a while that bowhead whales are capable of living for extremely long times. However, the mechanism behind this long lifespan has remained a bit of a mystery. Bowhead whales are the longest living mammals on the planet, and they're also among the largest animals in the world. Being so massive, this means that they have a lot of cells in their bodies, which should, in theory, mean that there's an increased likelihood for things to go wrong, such as cells becoming cancerous. And their extreme lifespans should also mean that there's more time for this to occur. However, bowhead whales, like all whales, are not highly cancer-prone, a phenomenon that's even been given a name, Pito's paradox. Bowhead whales are particularly difficult animals to study, since they're so giant and are endangered. However, this new research has been able to analyse tissue samples taken from bowhead whales hunted by Inuit villagers in northern Alaska, finally revealing how these incredible animals are able to stay cancer-free for so long. The initial hypothesis that the team of researchers had to explain Pito's paradox in bowhead whales was that the cells themselves were simply more resistant to becoming cancerous. However, they ended up discovering that the opposite was true. Compared to human cells, the cells of the bowhead whale could become malignant after relatively fewer mutations occurred. So what's going on here? Well, turns out that these cancer-causing mutations are simply less likely to occur in the whale cells because they are especially effective at repairing DNA damage. Additionally, they have lower overall mutation rates in their cells compared to other mammals. The key to this enhanced DNA repair is a protein called CIRBP, which was discovered to be highly expressed in bowhead tissues. This protein repairs broken DNA and becomes activated in cold conditions. Therefore, living in cold waters seems to boost their DNA repair abilities. Remarkably, when the researchers produced the CIRBP protein in human cells in the lab, it improved DNA repair, and when the protein was made to be overexpressed in fruit flies, it extended their lifespans and increased their resistance to being irradiated. So it turns out that rather than relying on more tumour suppressor genes to prevent cancers, whales such as the bowhead are maintaining the integrity of their genome through an enhanced DNA repair system, constantly fixing damaged cells rather than eliminating them. Although much more research is needed to determine if the CIRBP protein will enable humans to become more resistant to cancer and live longer, there certainly seems to be some incredible potential for future studies on improving our own DNA repair mechanisms. So there you go, if you ever needed more proof of how amazing whales are and why it's so important that we protect our oceans, these magnificent creatures might literally help us become cancer resistant in the future. There's more fascinating animal news up next as new research has shown that chimpanzees will rationally revise their beliefs, much like humans do. Rationally revising a belief is a type of decision making that involves changing how a decision is made based on newly available evidence. This ability has been considered one of the key traits of human rationality, and it's remained unclear whether any other animals are capable of this. Well, it turns out that chimpanzees are. They are capable of updating their initial belief about the location of hidden food in boxes when presented with conflicting evidence. They stuck to their original beliefs when the conflicting evidence was weak, such as only hearing the shaking of an object in the box. But when given strong evidence, such as actually being able to see into the box, they shifted their choice to match it. 
This indicates that the chimps are weighing the evidence in their minds and adjusting their beliefs accordingly. So chimpanzees can evaluate conflicting lines of evidence and engage in a reflective metacognitive process to decide how to act. It's truly remarkable how closely this behavior resembles that of humans. Some more amazing animal behavior news next, as researchers have recently documented spontaneous play behavior in sharks and skates. The discovery came from a Southern California aquarium, where a biologist noticed signs of boredom among captive individuals. To test whether environmental enrichment could improve their welfare, they introduced brightly colored pool toys, such as hoops, rings, and rubber squids, into their tank. Initially, the animals were cautious, but over the following weeks, their behavior changed. They began nudging, biting, and even carrying the objects on their noses, actions which are consistent with exploratory or playful behavior seen in other intelligent animals. One horn shark, affectionately named Bud, became strongly attached to an orange hoop and would sit on it constantly. Interestingly, the sharks favored orange and yellow objects, colors that likely provide strong contrast to the colors in the tanks, given their limited ability to see color. Some experts caution that these behaviors might represent exploration rather than true play, meaning that the animals may be engaging in behaviors to learn more about their environment. Whether it is curiosity or play, the findings add to a growing body of evidence that these fish possess complex cognitive abilities, which should be taken into account when these animals are kept in captivity. The researchers hope their work will inform improved welfare standards for captive sharks and rays. First up in the paleontology news this week, yes, something other than the Nanotyrannus bombshell happened. In fact, this week we also gained a new species of mosasaur. What a wonderful time. This new prehistoric marine reptile was uncovered in central Colombia and has been named Onerosaurus cabiaroi, with Onerosaurus meaning dream reptile, referencing the remarkable preservation of the delicate skull structures. The skull was found in rocks dating to the Coniacian stage of the late Cretaceous, approximately 90 to 85.7 million years ago. The paper presents a detailed description of all the intricate features visible in the skull, and the combination of anatomical traits exhibited by Onerosaurus confirms it as a species new to science. It's a wonderful addition to the known diversity of these marine predators, and a truly stunning fossil. In other prehistoric news, a rather brilliant study has been published showing that searching for lichens with vibrant orange pigmentation can actually lead you to fossils. Lichens, symbiotic organisms formed by the joining of fungi and algae, colonize many different substrates, including the surfaces of fossilized bones. Paleontologists had long noticed, only anecdotally before now, that certain orange lichens in Western North America were often found growing on dinosaur bones. Inspired by this observation, this new research analyzed lichen colonization in three different fossil bone beds in Dinosaur Provincial Park in Alberta, gathering data about the spectral reflectance profiles of the lichen pigments. Incredibly, they found a strong and significant link between orange lichen colonization and the density of fossils in the ground, likely because these specific lichen species prefer the alkaline conditions of the fossils, along with the porosity and mineral nutrient content of the bones. Excitingly, this means lichens can be used in future to detect the presence of fossil dinosaur bones in Western North America. The paper also demonstrates that remote sensing via drones can even be used to identify these orange lichen patches, thus revealing the locations of fossils from the air. What an ingenious new study. Our final piece of paleo news is a fascinating new paper that has analyzed the occurrence of healed injuries in the tails of hadrosaurid dinosaurs, commonly known as duckbilled dinosaurs. Looking at numerous specimens from the US, Canada, the UK, and Russia, the paleontologists documented a peculiar pattern in the occurrence of these injuries. Repeatedly, they found specimens that had evidence of healed traumas in the base to middle part of the tail, which seemed to have been inflicted by a similar loading force coming from above in most cases. The researchers considered a number of possible causes for these recurring tail injuries that all appear to have had similar origins, and concluded that the most likely explanation is that the damage was caused during the mating process as male hadrosaurs mounted them. The affected tail area corresponds to where the cloacal opening would have been, so this hypothesis makes sense. So we may have just found the first indirect evidence of sexual behavior in dinosaurs, and it also presents a potential new method to identify whether individual hadrosaurs 
were female, by looking to see if they have these healed injuries in the tail. Although homosexuality is widespread among many animals, so I'm not sure it's a 100% guaranteed way. And just a quick mention to acknowledge the 25th anniversary of non-stop human presence on the International Space Station this week. It was on the 2nd of November 2000 that the ISS became inhabited continuously for the first time, and there have always been people living up there since then. An amazing achievement of space tech to keep the place habitable for so long without a break. 290 people have visited the space station since then from 26 different countries. Unfortunately, the ISS only has five years left of service in it, with no plans for an international state-funded replacement, with NASA hoping that private ventures to have a space station orbiting Earth, of which there are a few, will replace the work that the ISS is currently doing. And finally for the news this week, a review of over 130,000 people with insomnia has found that long-term use of melatonin, that is the use for at least a year, may lead to negative health effects like a higher likelihood to be diagnosed with heart failure, hospitalization, and just higher likelihood of death. Melatonin is a hormone used to help regulate the body's sleep cycle, and is often used to help treat people who have difficulty falling asleep, such as those with insomnia. The scientists behind this research are anxious to see further work done on their findings, and for their study to be confirmed, as it might affect how these supplements are recommended. Melatonin has historically been considered quite harmless to take in this way, but there isn't yet a provable link with this study, so further research does indeed need to be carried out. The study carried a fair amount of limitations that would need to be addressed in future work to see if melatonin really is causing the increased risk in these patients' health, or whether or not there are other factors involved. For example, there is the suggestion that depression, anxiety, or other factors that lead to insomnia and the use of melatonin could be what's causing these adverse results. Well, that's it for the news this week. I really hope you enjoyed learning about everything that's happened in these last seven days of science. Again, make sure the notification bell is on so you don't miss our upcoming Nanotyrannus special feature. Also, this episode is a particularly special one as it officially marks the 400th episode of the main Seven Days of Science show. It's really quite unbelievable to think that we've been keeping this up for 400 episodes, never missing a week in all that time. And I'd just like to say a massive thank you for all the support we've received over the years. Let's keep it going for another 100 episodes. Maybe some after that, don't know. Maybe we just call it 500. Science won't progress after that. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> we've just got yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah, see, so subscribe to the new channel or we stop at 500 episodes. That's the deal. As in this, this new channel. There's not another one, just this one. Keep subscribing, yeah. Be sure to email us at 7 dosstories at gmail.com if you have any research you'd like to see us cover, or if you want to let us know how we can improve the show. You can follow 7 Days of Science on Instagram and TikTok, and also be sure to support us on Patreon if you enjoy what we do here. As always, a big thank you to our patrons, including Andrew Kawam, Kang Yin, Chippy Chippy Chapa Chapa, Clara Middleton, Dean A. Baffa, Diana Hernandez, Drifty Vistava, Gabriella, Gary Arrington, Giotist, I Rage, Yurin Zydovic, John French, Joseph Ree, Josh Lambert, Corey Peterson, Lena Rose, Mark Nevin, Matt Grandis, Mendicant Fryer, Mike Pace, Monitor Man, Nicholas Jork, Ralph Balzac, Robert Priyapajika Jr., Robert Thomas, Sammy Petrikus, Steve Bradshaw, Thomas F. Conroy III, Timothy N. Tedrow, Tracy Merrifield, and Troy Schmidt. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. No, we'll see you tomorrow for Nanotyrannus.